Hi everybody, I wanted to make a quick video uh, demonstrating how to get uh, Klimper 2 VST, which is a, for me, a Windows VST. So I'll be just covering Windows setup. I'm not familiar with Mac OS, but if you want to use Klimper main inside of FL Studio to uh, drive uh, VSTs, uh, instruments, um, instead of the built-in piano sound of the Klimper um, VST plugin, uh, this is the steps that I do that I prefer in FL Studio. They do provide some instruction uh, that you can follow uh, with the, um, the plugin itself, but I wanted to make a video because I, I honestly did, didn't see any out there, and I know that some people like to do things by watching a video, including myself. So I figured I would make a video for everyone um, to follow along. So first thing you do is just open up an instance of FL Studio and go to the channel rack. And once inside the channel rack, you want to right click on sampler and replace that with um, an instance of patcher. Okay, so I'm going to create launch patcher now. And uh, within patcher, all we need to do is a, is a few steps from here. Uh, right click inside patcher and what you want to do is add a plugin and this is where you're going to look for Klimper main your menu structure will look different than mine This says all my plugins yours will be different But just look for Klimper main and click on that So we've added an instance of Klimper main and I want to I want to add a, a, a new instrument instead of the built-in piano so I'm going to add a plugin and I'm just going to choose Analog Lab 5 from Arturia. Uh, so I will launch that instance. And so now both the plugins that I need are inside of Patcher. However, the, the routing of, these, uh, of the Patcher is not the way that I need them right now. So first thing I want to do is right click on Analog Lab. Uh, it doesn't really matter which order you do this in. And I'm going to deactivate that link from FL Studio to Analog Lab. I'm going to deactivate the link from Klimper Main in the yellow cord here. Uh, right click on that and deactivate it as, as an out to FL Studio. So now all we have is a bridge that we need to make between Klimper Main and Analog Lab. So just left click, drag a cable to... Uh, analog lab 5 and select voice MIDI input and you are now pretty much there except for a few things so um, the bridge the the connections have been made now we have to p make sure we select proper uh, MIDI ports and do a couple of things inside Klimper so step step one uh, open up uh, double click on Klimper uh, inside patcher and go to the cog in the top left of FL Studio and just select any output port that you want. Um, for me, I'm just going to do output port 3. So that's going to root MIDI out uh, through port 3. Now on Analog Lab 5, um, you're going to do the same thing. Double click on Analog Lab 5, go to the cog, and now select input port 3. So we've done output port 3 on the Klimper main plugin and input port 3 on the Analog 5 plugin. So now Klimper will trigger uh, the Analog la Lab instruments. Um, so let me actually just, I'll select a pad real quick. Uh, doesn't this, we'll just, whatever this first pad is. So I've selected a pad and I'm going to close Analog 5. Now there is uh, one more step here inside Klimper. Um, you double click on Klimper again and with this headphone icon, what you want to do is um, click on that and then select Klimper Main MIDI Out. So now basically it's, 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 it's not going to play the internal sound. It's telling Klimper to send MIDI uh, out of port 3 and it'll go into Analog Lab. So now when I, um, you know, if I drag a chord uh, into the... Um, the instrument section or the, the track section let me disable that it's annoying it, it, it'll it's now going to trigger that VST so I can press press play here and it'll play that pad 
using a C chord um, uh, in Analog Lab 5. So that's how you could start composing, you know. Um, so it's pretty easy once you get started to get um, to get going with with making um, music. So that's one sort of process. We've got the main thing. So you can start composing inside Klimper and using uh, a VST um, of your choice. You could stop here if that's all you wanted to do. Um, but I'm going to also show you how you can actually um, route, say, inside Klimper, um, these when you add a new track, how you can route those as well. So you can have a different bass sound um, for um, the Klimper bass track. Uh, I'm going to change this pad because I didn't realize how absolutely terrible that pad was. Um, atmosphere. I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter, but I don't want something completely annoying either. Let's see what this 80s pad sounds like. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Anyway, we'll just use that. Okay, so we've got our pad. Now, uh, you can close that. Um, you could put that now on like a mixer, you know, mixer track one. You could rename this, uh, you know, Klimper pad. I don't know, something like that, whatever you want. Now we want to say we want to do a bass instrument. So you want to actually create another patcher uh, channel rack. So you've got another patcher instance started here. And you're really going to follow, you know, much the same process. So we're going to right click here. We're going to add uh, Klimper. But instead of Klimper main, we're going to choose Klimper track. So now we select Klimper track and we've got that loaded in. We, uh, again, doesn't matter what order you do these things. I'm going to do them in a little bit different order. I'm going to break that connection there. I'm going to right click and add a new plugin. And I'll do another analog lab five uh, uh, instance and again uh, we just need to kind of break the links that we don't want to make and create the new link so that's now linked up there uh, same thing though we we need to uh, route the route the MIDI out we'll do port four this time and on our instrument double click that go to the cog and we'll do input port four. So as we, you know, edit within Klimper, it's going to route the audio to the channel that we want. Um, so let me actually pick a bass instrument while we're here. Um, I don't know, 31, sub bass. That's not a very good bass sound. Oh, I'm up an octave on my keyboard probably. Okay, fine. We'll just choose that. Okay, so now we have a bass sound. We've got the connection. We actually have um, Klimper sort of routed to it, but you know it's different because you're not actually going to compose in here. So we can rename this to um, bass, bass, whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you want, bass. Um, okay, so we don't compose inside of of here. We're still going to compose inside the Klimper main. So, you know, once you've made your, your connections and you, you, you've routed your MIDI, go back into the main Klimper uh, and then uh, double click on that. And so that's going to launch. And now you want to add a new track in the, with this button down here. And we'll call that bass. Ah, I'm holding a microphone in my left hand and typing with my right. And I don't know. It's not intuitive to me. Uh, so anyway, so now we've got a bass track, right? So we could start um, using Klimper as it's intended. You know, maybe I'll just do um, some root uh, notes or whatever. Okay, so what we have to do to make that pass through is, again, click on that headphone icon. And the instructions don't actually tell you to do this. I think this way is just more intuitive. So what you want to do with the Klimper uh, track, 
plugin is see how it, it, it created this instance 37 ED. That's actually the instance of the analog lab five base that we did. So select that. So now when we, when we um, see if it, we'll say we're in the main plugin, but now that we've added that, that should route, that should route the base sound um, to the uh, correct place. So let's press play on this and see. Yeah, you can hear those bass dunk, quarter notes. You know, every every other beat. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you do it. So you can obviously do the same steps and add like a melody track or other you know other instrument tracks. But uh, now that we've routed, now that we've routed everything, uh, yeah, you can get back into composing right in here changing chords and then going into your bass and you know adding additional bass notes etc and it's all going to flow through uh fl studio uh properly and you should be well on your way so hopefully that was helpful i'm not a professional video maker um i stammer a bit and uh hopefully this was helpful and um not too long and not too boring and got to the point quick enough good luck and hope you enjoy. And I, I'm really enjoying Klimper 2 VST. I, I think it's really, I, I like, I, I've got a, a couple of different, you know, chord writing, um, chord arranging uh, plugins like Scalar. And I've used Cthulhu uh, with uh, chord packs. Um, so I, I, I enjoy, and, you know, Easy Keys from TuneTrack. This particular plugin for me just, it just works the best because you know it it i don't need a whole lot of like guidance as far as what chords to choose um i do like to stay within you know the family of chords that are part of like the scale but i'm not you know i don't i don't need ever, like hey here's the next chord su that we suggest i i want a pool of chords that i can play around with and i just really like how it's easy to uh, to drag those chords up into the sort of the playlist and connect them together, change the voicing. And then when you add like melody and bass, what I really like is how you can see the chord uh, that 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 particular you know section that you're on. You can see the notes of the chord. So when you're placing your bass line and your melody line, you're doing it within the scale um, and within the chord. So that's kind of neat. That's why I like it a lot because. Um, uh, I just I just like those those features. Anyway, so I'll stop now and let you do what you do. Uh, take care, everybody.